Hello, Buju, uh, aloha, everybody. Uh, welcome to our afternoon conversation uh, with Dr. Pulani Kanahele. Um, I would like to acknowledge our sponsors as well here with the, um, beyond, besides the Native American Cultural Center, we also have the chaplain's office uh, in the Asian American Cultural Center. So we're very excited um, to have this and, and you know, we're, we hope to continue this. And so, um, you know, we did one earlier in it seems like a long time ago there in September, but you know, it, it, it went well and we really want to continue this. And so we're very happy to have you all here. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and, and do a quick introduction and um, thank Dr. Um, Pulani uh, Kanahele uh, is of pure Hawaiian descent and responsible to her ancestral lineage. Uh, she was raised in Hula and Oli tradition that spans many generations. Pulani is also responsible to this matriano tradition. She knows the forests, mountains, volcanoes, and the ocean of her homeland uh, from her native Hawaiian perspective. Uh, she was educated in Western institutions and earned a Bachelor of Arts degree um, and received a Doctor of uh, Human Letters in, from University of Hawaii, uh, Monona campus. Um, and so, you know, with that, I, I'm going to turn it over and, and thank you for joining us today. And, um, I'm very excited to hear from you. Aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Hawaii of Polani Kanakoli Kanahele. Usually, when I'm asked to talk, I'm um, or present whatever. There is always an object uh, for the presentation, and so I usually stay on um, stay on focus with the presentation. Today, there was. There wasn't any object given to me or any topic given to me. And so I thought I would talk about me uh, and, and my Hawaii world. Um, I was, I'm 83 years old and I've lived in Hawaii uh, um, most of my life except for 10 years. 10 years in the 60s, I lived in um, San Francisco. And uh, I enjoyed living in San Francisco because that taught me a lot about what goes on in the big city. And at that time, we were going through a lot of um, um, political energy. Uh, some was negative, a lot of it was positive. And, and so I went to San Francisco to actually sit in among the positive uh, negative um, energy that was going on there. I learned a lot from there and after 10 years, got married, came home. And um, I got married, had children, so I came home because I had children. Um, but um, that is kind of my, my life in an expense. And after that, I taught at the, the university system for 35 years and then finally retired in um, 19, no, 2013. And I was supposed to retire in 2005, but I didn't retire in 2013. So I'm in a retirement mode. And retirement mode doesn't always mean retirement. Retirement mode is you do what you want and you try to catch up with what you didn't do before. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm catching up. And to do this presentation to you is, is a great thing for me because it gives me a chance to tell you all about me and my Hawaii and the way I look at what Hawaii actually is. Okay, and so we're looking at my, my PowerPoint and my PowerPoint tells me that th these are the islands that I'm from. And what it also tells me is that my islands are in little pieces of land in the middle of a huge ocean. And so we're always conscious of the fact that we're in a huge ocean and uh, <clears throat> Uh, this is the island I live on, uh, the island of Hawaii. And uh, this is the rest of the islands. The island of Kauai is way up here. Um, my island is about a million years old. Part of it is about a million years old. So the islands have been around for, for that long. My island is also volcanically active. And, um, and so it continues to grow. Oahu, you may know because Oahu is all over the place. It's Honolulu. It's where all the tourists come 
to all of the island. Most of the island is packed with, with hotels and white sand beaches. Okay. Kauai is packed with white sand beaches and many hotels. Hawaii is hardly any because we don't have too many white sand beaches. Okay, because it's still growing. Let me go to the next. This is the, the whole archipelago. Okay, and so it gives you a chance to see the whole. Um, the island from what we see, Mokumanamana and south is, okay. Anyway, the, the rest of the island, the archipelago, uh, from Curie down to Mokumanamana are sandy flat islands. Mokumanamana down to Hawaii Island are volcanic. Okay, which tells you that those islands are really old. They're all sandy, but they're all going back to the ocean. They're all in a mo mode of uh, erosion. This is my front yard. Okay, if I um, take, um, I used to live on the beach before when we were little kids growing up. And so when you look out in the, um, in the sunrise, this is our front yard. It's a big ocean. And so you're very conscious of the fact that you are really small in a big ocean. And if you look really good right on the horizon, there is a little island there. And so again, you're conscious of how little the islands are. <clears throat> uh, I put this word out here, Kanaloa, because Kanaloa is the, uh, the deity of the ocean. But Kanaloa also means like eternity. It's always going to be there. The ocean is always going to be there for us. How Novella tells you what the ocean is all about. Some of the things the ocean does is all of the things that die in the ocean, they all sink down to the bottom of the ocean. They go through a compost kind of process and eventually all the molecules get caught up in the ocean. It rises to the top and it transpires up into the clouds. And so you see all of these clouds are, are um, salt water clouds. So the clouds that we get over the over Hawaii are saltwater clouds. The great thing about saltwater clouds and about Kanaloa that has to do with the ocean, it's a way of reciprocation for, for the ocean and land, is the saltwater clouds will come over the ocean as, as, as rain and it falls and it fertilizes the land, fertilizes the forest and the forest begins to grow again. All the water sinks back down into the land, goes back out into the ocean, and it does the cycle all over again. Okay. And so this is what Kanaloa Hauna Vela is all about. I wanted to show you a little bit of uh, some of the islands and um, the, the stages of the island. This is the island of Kauai. <clears throat> As I showed you in the, the first map, this is the one that's farther north. And um, it still uh, has a lot of volcanic pu'us or, or cones on the island. So it's still very high. The highest point on Kauai is 5,000 feet. And but Kauai is white sand all around. What that white sand indicates is erosion. So the island has already begun to erode. Like the other uh, islands that are northwest of us, all flat erosional islands, and it's going to go back into the ocean. Eventually, Hawaii will, will do that, but it's in that process of doing that. Some of our sand is either black or red. And so volcanic sands are red if, if the volcano eruption is acidy, more acidy, and so it produces uh, cinders. And so you see some of the red cinders here. And so the whole beach may have just red sand or the whole beach may have black sand. Our island has black sand beaches because it's still very active. And if we have any sand at all, it's black sand beaches. Uh, some of the black sand is very fine, which means that it's been eroding for a little while. Some of the black sand is very coarse, which means that as soon as it hit the, the eruption hits the water, it explodes and it causes the sand. And so you can have sandy beaches within a day of, of eruption. So the whole beach will be full of sand because it continues to, to, 
to um, flow into the ocean, it continues to explode, and uh, they it will fill it up, fill up the um, the 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 reef with uh, black sand, and so we have sandy beaches that's coarse black sand beaches uh, on our island. This is what my my island looks like, my home um, in Hilo. Uh, this is what it looks like. This is the, the, the beaches that I'm used to going, the beaches that we dive off to swim, the beaches that we take our poles to catch fish and we or take our spears to catch fish or throw our nets. This is the beach where we go and, and collect um, shellfish or, uh, or seaweed to, to eat. And so basically this is, our, this is where we get our food from. Um, and, but this is home for me. No white sand beach, nothing like that. And as long as the ocean is calm like this and it's a beautiful day here, uh, it's wonderful. Then it gets really rough and, and, and uh, high tide and we need to stay away from the big ocean. But this is Hilo. And so this is a, a map of my island. <clears throat> Just to get you acquainted with my island. Uh, this is Hilo, Hilo is east. And this is where I live. Uh, Hamakua is high cliff areas. Uh, Kohala is at the north end of the island. Part of it is high cliff, part of it is low rocky dry area. The west side of the island is very dry. Kona has about five sandy beaches. And so tourists go to Kona for, um, for holidays. <clears throat> and then the bottom of the um, island is Kau. And Kilauea is uh, the active volcano that we have. And the latest vol eruption was in 2000 and, um, 2018. And uh, that particular eruption went from Kilauea Crater, which is right here, all the way down to Puna and covered this whole area. So we have new land in this new area. And uh, lots of people that have moved into the area uh, found out that you really cannot live in Puna because that's where the new eruptions will, will cover. <clears throat> this is Mauna Loa, our um, mountain that's still very active. Mauna Loa is 13,679 feet high. And Mauna Kea is 13,803 feet high. So we have high mountains and um, but we also have active mountains, active as far as volcan volcanic uh, is concerned, volcanoes are concerned. <clears throat> this is our two mountains, Mauna Kea, looking at it from an airplane or a helicopter, I don't know which I was on. And uh, this is Mauna Loa. So you can see how high the mountains is. And this, of course, is during the winter. Okay. And so this is where all of the um, uh, these people are. Okay. And this is Kilauea. This is the active volcano. And um, as I said last year, 2018 rather, uh, it erupted. And um, it had been erupting in the crater for about 10 years, but it never left the crater. And last year it didn't leave, really leave the crater. What it did is it went down into it and followed a old uh, lava tube and came up in, in the, the lower Puna area and destroyed a lot of uh, land and a lot of homes in that area. But this is what it looks like now. And it's beginning to form a, the, the, we don't really know what it is. It's sort of, a, small lake, I guess. <clears throat> Mauna, Kea, Mauna Kea is a big lake and this one is beginning to form a small lake. Holomai pelemai kai kina akakawai mo okini no ike wo kumalai ok pelema ike ki no ike kia pelema akapua o go eli eligumai ebele 
<clears throat> this is the movement of, of volcanoes. This is our chant. We have hundreds of chant to Pelehonuamea, who is the deity of volcanism. This red thing that you come down that you see moving is Pele or lava. And, <clears throat> and it, when you see black in the middle, it's already begin, beginning to cool off. But it destroyed, as, as I pointed out to you earlier, this is part of the 2015 eruption. It went 2009, 2015, 2018. Uh, eruptions from, from the top of Kilauea over and down into towards the ocean. And so you see that this is coming down, it's covered the whole landside. It's also covering some of the forest. And so one of the things that destroy our forest is lava flow. But one of the things that we cannot blame the lava flow as far as destruction is concerned is because we live on an island and it's the lava that builds our island. So it is the builder of islands. So we shouldn't, when if we build a house, we shouldn't build it in that stream where the lava is going to come down. And we actually know where the lava is coming to. And so it's a county that says, okay, you can build your house here. And all the people build a house in the forest. And the lava came down and, and took it all away. Okay. Okay, and I'm showing you this as um, uh, part of the idea of destroying our forest. Um, the, in 1870, we started building big ranches and they started cutting back the trees of our forest. And then we had lots and lots of cattle ranches on all of the different islands. This particular cattle ranch is on my island. And so we're all familiar with cattle and the health of the cattle. These cattle look pretty healthy to me. And um, the trees that you see here are one of the most important native tree. It's called ohia. And ohia is the, throughout our, our, our island, our archipelago. Ohia is the tree that puts out a lot of water, also chums down a lot of water. So as far as water cycle is concerned, Ohia is an important tree for us. Okay. And talk about cattle. I wanted to show you a picture of my father. This is my father, handsome guy. And uh, he was a prison guard in the, and the prison was in the forest, is in the forest. And his uh, duty for prisoners was to take them into the forest talk about the forest, help regenerate the forest, and talk about what trees are good for making canoes, what trees are good for other things, and cut only the trees that are needed. That was his, his duty as, as a prison guard. This is my grandpa. And my grandpa was, um, was a rancher. And that's why I showed the picture of the cattle. And I can't talk too much about ranching because my grandpa was a rancher. Uh, but it still was part of the way our trees were destroyed, but he's a handsome grandpa anyway. This is our forest. This is part of our forest in the month of May when all the flowers are in bloom. The trees that I showed, the, the lehua trees that were, or the ohia trees that we're seeing from the bottom up. This is how you see it from the top. This is on a, on a helicopter when all the flowers are in bloom and eventually the flowers will disperse and all the seeds will fly off and, and um, allow new trees to grow. Uh, but this is our water cycle tree. This is an important part of who we are and what we are. Okay, and this is my, uh, how I'm, this is my family tradition. Um, as, as Matthew introduced, I'm um, a person who comes from a tradition of <clears throat> ha'a or hula is a different kind of uh, dance. And um, it's um, dances that accompanies uh, chants. And um, this comes from my maternal side of the family. This is my mother. This is my si myself when I was 40 years old and I could dance. And uh, this is my sister. And my sister and I were teachers after my mother was gone for, for many years. And now my sister teaches with one of my daughters. And um, the people that you see, and we're in, Every year we go up to the crater and we do one ceremony for the crater and uh, to just keep 
that that relationship alive. Uh, this is um, uh, my family, uh, my grandchildren, my nephew, my niece, uh, my cousin's children, the whole family dances. And we dance, we dance uh, chants uh, to basically volcanic chants. Uh, and we have a large collection of them. This is one of my daughters. My other daughter is, um, um, both daughters are, are college educated. This one has a master's degree, but she quit the university because she wanted to do her own business. My other daughter has a PhD, but she also quit the university to get into her own business. Um, this is my, my grandson and all of our children are, you know, they've all been to the Western education because it's, it's a necessity. But one of the, the, the idea of the Western education, as far as I'm concerned, uh, because I've been teaching it for long, in, in it for a long time, is it is a good way to, to bring what we know as natives into the system in our own way, instead of allowing other people to tell our stories. And um, we tell our own stories and we update our, all of our information into the academic world and become, so it become part of the academia. And so that's what we've done in our college, uh, brought up all of our um, knowledge and all of our chants because our chants, a lot of um, people who, who speak Hawaiian and uh, are if in the university system look at chants as poetry. And we look at old chants as data collectors. They have data in them. And so it's, it's valuable to us um, because the, a lot of the stories have changed in each generation, the story change to fit that particular generation. In chants, chants don't change, it stays the same. And so it's a good way of collecting data and, um, and accommodating it or, or articulating it in a more academic way. Okay, this is another picture of dance. It's, it's very, um, it has a lot of energy, the, the dances that we do. This is some of the instruments that we use. This is called a pahu. This is my old instrument. It belonged to my grand, it belonged to my husband's mother. And um, her, her husband is the one that made it. It's made of our, um, a particular native tree. Um, most of our drums are made of, or pahus are made of, um, the trunk of the coconut tree because it has a nice resilience to it and um, otherwise are uh, the the instruments that we use are gourds and uh, and pahus then we have little drums or big drums smaller drums etc and these are the, some of the ways that we use our pahus. And this is our um, part of our ceremonial drink. This is drink is called ava. And this is the drink that when we have ceremony, we give it to the, the deities, to, to the crater, or to the deity of the forest, the deity of water, the deity of the ocean. It's part of our ceremony, we give the drink. And the, the drink is called ava. And what ava does is, is it numbs your mouth and eventually it numbs your brain. And what that does, the good thing that does is it relaxes you a lot. Yeah. But this is the drink of that um, to our, our deities. Okay. And so when this is when I'm <clears throat> asked to do keynotes or, um, or present in, in different conferences, and usually I like to present to conferences that I'm comfortable in, which means conferences that have natives in it, because I'm a native. And I think that other natives um, understand natives. And so those are conferences I'm relaxed to doing it. Um, um, presentations in, but it's, um, it's one of the ways that you deliver those things that you can articulate from, from your native culture into this kind of a presentation. Um, and so you elevate a lot of, of your, um, from, from a 
from a mere chant, which is what we do all the time, which was one of the chants that anyway that I did. I break it down where I deconstruct the chant. And I've taught people to deconstruct the chant. And when we do construct the chant, we find a lot more in the chant than, than our eyes allow us to see as we're translating. And so the whole idea of the, um, the Kanaloa Hauna Vela that, that I told you about the great ocean and how that is used as kind of a, the, the the compost of fertilizing the, the, the uh, earth um, is something that you find in chants and you don't find it in, in regular mo'oletos. And so you know that those people that compo um, composed the chants actually knew what they were talking about, but they did it in a way that were, um, that were abridged in abridged forms. And so that is, um, a bridge form is, is chanting or it's, um, okay. And then today in 2019, I became an activist. I was always kind of an activist, but I became an activist, that's me, uh, for Mauna Kea. And uh, <clears throat> we're up on the mountain for like nine months, uh, protesting the, the building of a large building on our mountain that, that's not gonna go at all. And so I met activists that got arrested and that you, you make, you become passionate about it. You make the commitment and you go through all of that. That's because I'm passionate about who I am. And while you're on the mountain, because it's a different environment, you look at what, the, what the, the space above there is doing and all of these different kinds of clouds we experience, lenticular, Lenticular in Hawaiian is called Keau Avihivihiwalao Kalani. And this is what we call uh, Manu, Ao Manu, Manu clouds, different uh, weather systems. And this is our ceremony. While we were protesting on the mountain for nine months, we had a ceremony three times a day. And this is part of our ceremony. Okay. And so that's what I'm all about. I'm all about being Hawaii, um, protecting what is mine, and um, and being um, very passionate about who I am, and bringing in as as part of my education. And I really haven't used any of the things that I learned in college as part of my presentations. Uh, all of that I've learned at home and in chance is what I do as presentations. And it's what I also take into classrooms. And I think as natives, we all have the same kind of thing. We all have a lot of knowledge that is given to us. We all have a lot of, a lot of knowledge that is around us that we need to be able to bring into the classroom um, and articulate it so that it's understood at a different level. Okay, that's that's um, that's my presentation, sir. Thank you. That, that, that was that was great, and, and I learned a lot, and I really enjoyed it, and I appreciate everybody who showed up, and um, and thank you for spending the time with us and and, and gifting us uh, your time and. Um, yes. Aloha. Okay. Aloha, Heidi Ho. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Auntie, for doing this. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for listening in. Hi, Auntie. I just want to say mahalo. I just okay. I can't. miss my Hawaiian language classes and yeah. all my kumu, um, even though I'm home right now. So it was so nice to just see a Hawaiian Auntie and kumu and just hear correct pronunciation. And you said my name correctly on the first try. So <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so are you, where are you? Oh, Oahu. We'll go oh, with you. Oahu. Okay. 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 Aloha. Oh, we home. We home.